On the northern edge of San Diego County, next to the rugged hills of Camp Pendleton, lies Morrow Hills. Morrow Hills is uh, about 3,400 acres, and it, over the hill it goes down, it extends to the San Luis Rey River. Uh, it's prime agricultural land. Dennis Martinek lives in Morrow Hills and launched the campaign that gathered 13,000 signatures for the SOAR initiative. That's short for Save, Open Space and Agricultural Resources. It's Measure Y on the ballot. Uh, measure Y would protect that. It would protect the agriculture and, of course, the open space. There's only about 12% of the agricultural land left in Oceanside. So uh, what Measure Y would do is require the city council to get voter approval before turning over any open space land or agricultural land over for development of higher densities. Small agritourism businesses are beginning to spring up in Morrow Hills, like this winery and tasting room. Landowners are moving away from citrus and avocado and experimenting with crops like coffee and grapes, which use less water. Measure Y is to preserve agricultural land in Oceanside, but ironically, the San Diego Farm Bureau opposes it. We've been farming for, in Oceanside for about 80 years, and our family has worked very hard. Um, during the war, we lost everything. We came back to Oceanside and, and worked to create you know, what we have today, but it hasn't been without struggles. Neil Nagata is president of the San Diego Farm Bureau and the third generation to work this land in Morrow Hills. Now we have competition from Mexico. There's a lot of regulations in California. We have a high labor cost, and the cost of water is, is you know, astronomical, as you would know. But, um, and then just one more thing on top of it, uh, this measure that was brought out by a neighbor um, is threatening our livelihood. Nagata says putting restrictions on how his land can be used will lower its value as collateral for bank loans that he and other commercial farmers rely on every year before the harvest comes in. We borrow money against the value of the land. And so if the land value is less because of these restrictive measures make it difficult to borrow money. But Martinek accuses commercial farmers like Nagata of being in league with big developers who are planning future housing tracts and funding the opposition to Measure Y. We see that the development community is interested in that. Uh, the particular developer of North River Farms has contributed over $500,000 to oppose Measure Y because they see opportunities of building housing, and that's where the profits are. Nagata says selling his land to developers is the last thing he wants to do. I think a lot of people don't understand that um, for farmers, it's more than just a job. It's actually a lifestyle, and it's uh, really how we identify ourselves. And if we, if we lose that, if we actually had to sell, it is a negative thing. It isn't something that we want to do. Eric Bruvolt of the San Diego North Economic Development Council says if Measure Y passes, it will freeze the current zoning, which allows new houses on two and a half acre lots. But if you reduce the value of the land and you make it difficult for farmers to finance, much more likely it's going to stand fallow or it's going to be developed in two acre estates that sell for two million each. Bruvolt says Measure Y will only make it more difficult for Oceanside to keep up with its housing goals. Oceanside's only at about 20% of its mandated housing needs that it was supposed to build over the last cycle. So it's already behind the eight ball. He says passing Measure Y will make house prices go up faster in Oceanside. Not so, says Diane Nygaard, a community activist who supports the SOAR initiative. She says Oceanside has plenty of space to build new housing in town. Our adopted housing plan for Oceanside We've got plans for 6,200 housing units on land that's zoned residential. Nygaard says the city council has already approved housing on land that was supposed to remain public open space, like here on El Corazon in the heart of Oceanside. Why do we think it's at risk? Because it's at risk. <laughs> we see it happening before our eyes. Nygaard says three votes on the city council has changed the zoning on this piece of open space and it could do so in Morrow Hills. She wants voters to have the final say on whether more housing can be built on Oceanside's last remaining green spaces. Maybe they'll never be threatened, but if they are, we will have a voice. We will be able to say, OK, you've got a good project, put it on the ballot and let the people decide. Then we can weigh the benefits to the community. 
Voters face a difficult choice. If they vote no on Measure Y, it opens the door to denser housing development encroaching on Morrow Hills. If they vote yes, it could help small farmers but threaten the livelihood of the remaining commercial farmers and result in more land being sold for million-dollar mansions on the outskirts of town. Allison St. John, KPBS News.